All right, so we're back working on the Miata. So yesterday I got it running. I uh, drove it home. It was rainy. It was kind of scary. Obviously these cars love to hydroplane and have no traction control or anything. So um, it was quite a drive home. Anyways, so I found out quite a few things. This fender rubs, I guess this wasn't rolled properly. Um, you could definitely tell it was rolled, but it still rubs, I believe back here. So we're gonna have to find that. A solution for that this one was rolled quite a bit you can tell there's no uh, lip left here pretty well rolled but the other side unfortunately wasn't anyways um, I was driving back to the shop today and realized that the brakes were kind of spongy turns out we're out of brake fluid which is kind of scary hopefully there's no leaks anywhere I'm sure it sucked up some air so we're gonna have to bleed the whole system fix this brake situation also Got a problem with this headlight. The headlight motor seems to be working. It's actually super hot. I think it's shorted out. I'm just gonna take it off, disconnect it. Anyways, so there's something wrong with the mechanism, I guess. Um, the motor works itself. I have another one right here, which we're gonna figure that out after we fix the brake situation. Uh, but yeah, let's start jacking uh, this thing up. First, you wanna do is basically loosen all the wheels, have all the wheels in the air, so. I prefer to take them off right now or loosen them so I don't have to struggle later pressing the brakes and stuff. but yeah there's a bunch of junk in here uh, pretty much pretty clean already so there's still some stuff back there but it's all right we're gonna go ahead and start taking this thing apart making sure there's no issues with the brakes so that could happen from a leak or literally just low brake fluid or the pads just worn down a lot. So, and the guy, the previous owner never checked them, I guess. And the current owner didn't check it, obviously. So we have this issue. to find the the leak this is pretty clean all this is dry so that's good so not top end so at least it wasn't my fault but we are still leaking oil for whatever reason so there might be just I saw it was around the dipstick so it could just be the dipstick gasket that's broken and that might be the reason why it's leaking oil but um, we're checking the brake system. So brake system has a giant leak back here. You can tell the lines are wet and stuff. It could just be that they're loose or I don't know. So we're gonna take that off and double check it. Make sure it's all good. Make sure there's no junk in there. Maybe that's why, I mean, that's definitely why it's leaking. So other than that, it looks pretty good. It does have coilovers, obviously. This thing's sitting pretty low. Over here, no leaks. See, it's dry. Obviously, you have this distribution block down there, so that's definitely where it's leaking from. Where else? Nothing. I mean, all this looks pretty solid. Obviously, we can see that that bushing is kind of gone, so yeah. I mean, the brakes are good. They're, there's still a lot of life left in them on this end too so that's wonderful but yeah uh, we're gonna go ahead and try to fix this leak before we start refilling the system with brake fluid you can tell there's a puddle right there already so I'm gonna start taking this off taking it apart uh, see what I can do see if I can fix it uh, it shouldn't be too hard I mean just taking it off double checking make sure it's clean I might have to recrimp the lines obviously you have to oh reflare the lines there you go so yeah uh let's get to it okay so uh we have our little contraction hooked up here basically just a water bottle with a with a hose so you can catch the brake fluid whenever it comes out of the nipple right there so um like i said pump it five times once the foot's all the way down making pressure you open this valve you'll fill this up with brake fluid or air whatever comes out that's how you basically bleed the brakes. So we gotta do this four times. 
Let's do it. All right, so we started bleeding the brakes and then this top one is the one that's leaking. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it off. I might have to reflare the line. I might have to reflare the line just to make sure it's good. But um, yeah, we got leaking out of that top. So it uh, should be easy to just pull it off and then I'm gonna go to an auto parts store and see if I can get a crimper. Not a crimper, a flare kit. Just take, usually you wanna get like an open-ended box wrench. Uh, for these lines, brake lines. These usually strip. Should be able to remove it regardless, so. Um, this line's pretty good. Uh, don't have serial issues with it. But this top one's the one that's giving us issues, so. So we got the line right here. Oh, it's kind of dark, sorry. Uh, we got it cut off. I got the flare right here. And then we got the flare kit over here. So this flare kit, we're gonna do a double uh, double flaring, double flare uh, on that thing. Uh, so what you gotta do is get your old piece and it looks like to be a one fourth. So perfect, we'll do the one fourth. And then I believe this is the three. This is your one fourth piece. So what you do is run it first, make it very nice and flared, and then you run this piece in it. You make double flares. So that's what we're gonna do. Easy peasy. Should be actually I think you just run this line on it and then you put it in and it double flares it for you immediately. So should be good enough, easy enough. So let's go ahead and do it. All right, so it's real dark now. Um, I basically re reflared that line. I got it put in already. So should be ready to start bleeding the system. <laughs> my father ended up bleeding the lines no we have brakes all around anyways at least we got the brake situation fixed we actually have brakes on this car now topped off the fluid and we should be ready to go install the wheels and then drive it home test drive it <laughs> if i lose brakes on the way home that would suck but i doubt that's gonna happen because we did a pretty well job uh, all right, so we got the Miata fully put together. Uh, got the wheels on and everything. Yet to test drive it, honestly. We're gonna go ahead and do that. But it was on the Miata. While it was in the air, I double checked on the differential and it turns out it's a LSD Torsen differential. So that's amazing. Uh, it adds a lot of value to the vehicle. Did not get to play with the headlight today, sadly. I'll do that tomorrow. All right, so we're gonna be changing the tie rod end on the Miata. Should be pretty straightforward. Should take less than 20 minutes. Ah, so what you wanna do is loosen your wall, your, your lug nuts first. Um, you, before you jack up the car, unless you have an impact, you should be okay. If you don't have one, you should loosen your wheel nuts before jacking it up. This thing has jacking points, but honestly, they're all messed up. Keep 
these jacks in underneath it. There we go. Now we should be safe to lower it and let it sit on it. The weight is on the jack stand, but taking care of you. Damn, bro. That should be an F1 pit. What are we changing? We are changing this tie rod in the front. So it should be pretty easy to get off. Real quick, get the cotter pin out of the way. Mark your wheels. This could be the this could be the cause of our this could be the cause of our uh, rubbing, which I hope it is, because so for this, ideally, you want a hammer, which I should go get because I'm gonna break something. <laughs> It should take me no time. Should have this thing in in like 10 minutes. There we go, easy peasy. Here's a tip. You wanna put tape on this so you know where to put it back on so you don't mess up your alignment. Get the new one, cotter pin. And now uh, go ahead and tighten it. Cool. Slide it back in. Put this nut on. Tighten it. That's why you need the cotter pin, so make sure it's lined up with the holes. And we'll put this through. All right, cool. We're done. Easy as that. New tie rod end installed. Um, very simple. Hopefully, this was the main issue of our clicking. There was a little bit up and down movement, so once it starts doing up and down movement, you gotta change it. Alright, cool. We're done. That was it. Thank you for watching. Okay, <laughs> right, let's go try this thing. So the Miata is officially finished. We did a lot of work to it. Obviously, it changed the head gasket. Um, I did some stuff off camera. For example, I put on new oil, new filter. I fixed the pop-up. It was getting stuck for whatever reason. So now they were, both work fine. Also put on the power steering belt. Um, and I haven't even washed it, honestly. So, I mean, that's all mechanically I've done to it. Oh, also fix the rear uh, line. There's a distribution block goes on that side and the line that went up and over to this wheel, for whatever reason, the, the line was not flared correctly. So I have to take out the line and reflare it. But yeah, I mean, this car is mechanically sound. It's running great, no issues, uh, no check engine light, so. I believe it's all happy. And the AC works. It works pretty well. So that's good. And I still have power steering, so great. But we don't need it, so let's turn that off. It's a very nice day out, kind of chilly. So I'm right now I'm going to pick up a spark plug. So in the meantime, I'm gonna finish this video. Kind of a little bit of POV driving on this vehicle before it's all said and done and sold. Let's get started, let's go. 
drive this thing around. It's a little already warm, so. I bet a lot of people look at me funny, got a GoPro on my head. Dipstick, uh, maybe a little bit overfilled, and it started leaking once I parked it. But since it has not leaked any oil, to my knowledge, so that's good. It's gonna rub. Oh wow, it didn't. That's it for this car. Um, the build series is kind of over. All right, so we're gonna wash the Miata. Went ahead and got some soap and microfiber towels. I'm sure a lot of people have washed the car before. Um, 
but yeah pretty simple so i figured out what the issue was with the fender rubbing uh ended up being this little bracket um apparently it was not hooked up so the more you know <laughs> Hook that up, it does not rub anymore. Now we have zero issues. Change the tie rod end, so now it doesn't shake uh, while going uh, fast. So, literally feels um, super, super tight. Um, feels great, fun little car. Uh, but yeah, I mean, now it's time to clean it up, take pictures of it, and put it up for sale. So, uh, let's get to cleaning it, and then we'll go take pictures of this thing, see what we can take some nice ones.